Our dear Father in heaven, thank you Lord for giving us the privilege of life. And thank you Lord for giving us good health and protection and all the temporal blessings which you give to us and supply in all our needs. We worship you dear Lord. Lord in heaven, we await your soon coming. We are preparing for that day when you will come or for the day of our death. And we want that should we come to the end of our lives, we will be prepared and we will be in your kingdom when you come. Therefore, Lord, we pray that as we fellowship with you now, that you give us the grace and strength and equip us with every material necessary that we may be ready for that day. Put your words in my mouth, dear Lord, and help me, Lord, to speak words that are spirit and life. Grant to all of us the gift of your Holy Spirit that we may discern spiritual things. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. August 8 Conflict and Courage August 8 Table in the Wilderness Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear Him, upon them that hope in His mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Psalms chapter 33 verse 18 and 19. Like the Savior of mankind, of whom he was a type, Elisha in his ministry among men combined the work of healing with that of teaching. Faithfully, untiringly, throughout his long and effective labors, Elisha endeavored to foster and advance the important educational work carried on by the schools of the prophets. It was on the occasion of one of his visits to the school established at Gilgal that he healed the poisoned pottage. At Gilgal also, while the dearth was still in the land, Elisha fed 100 men with the present brought to him by a man of Baal Shalisha, bread of the first fruits, 20 loaves of barley, and full ears of corn in the husk thereof. What condescension it was on the part of Christ, through his messenger, to work this miracle to satisfy hunger. Again and again, since that time, though not always, in so marked and perceptible a manner, has the Lord Jesus worked to supply human need. It is the grace of God on the small portion that makes it all sufficient. God's hand can multiply it a hundredfold. From his resources, he can spread a table in the wilderness. By the touch of his hand, he can increase the scanty provision and make it sufficient for all. It was his power that increased the loaves and corn in the hands of the sons of the prophets. When the Lord gives a work to be done, let not men stop to inquire into the reasonableness of the command or the probable result of their efforts to obey. The supply in their hands may seem to fall short of the need to be filled, but in the hands of the Lord it will prove more than sufficient. The servitor set it before them, and they did it, and left thereof according to the word of the Lord. The gift brought to him with thanksgiving and with prayer for his blessing he will multiply as he multiplied the food given to the sons of the prophets and to the weary multitude. Amen. The title of our devotion for today is Table in the Wilderness. Our key text is taken from the book of Psalm chapter 33 verse 18 and 19 and it says behold the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him 
upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. The relevance of what we are going to study today will come into play when we look at the present state of things and when we look at the prophecy in the word of God concerning what the future is going to be. The purpose of this study is to inspire in us confidence in God during times of hardship and times of want. Especially does the righteous need to have this in mind. But the Lord is merciful and both the righteous and the wicked can be inspired with confidence in God as their provider and sustainer. This devotion is important because as I speak, there is a prediction in the world. But then the, the word of God says that there will be famine in the lands, not in the whole world, but in many places there will be famine. The world is predicting food shortages and as the war goes on, this food shortage, though created artificially, is something that will affect all in the world. What will we do at such a time as this? And as we come closer and closer to the end, especially is it important for those who are the commandment keepers. In the book of Revelation, as we have seen in previous devotions, God's people are described as those that keep his commandments. Against such people, the world will come in unity and they will threaten them as we read in the book of Revelation 13, telling them that they will not be able to buy or sell except they cave in to the world's demands. And whatever those demands will be, it is certainly going to be a request to make them disobey God. It is going to be a request to tell them, unless you fall in line to our own way of thinking and our way of doing things, you cannot be part of us. Look at the way the world is sanctioned today. As we speak, we know countries like Russia sanctioned. Many other countries like Venezuela and other countries who do not fall in line to the world's agenda. When I say the world, I'm referring to those who have united together like the EU and uh, the NATO. And you see how they are punished for it. Now, that is an example of what is going to happen to God's people in the future. They are going to be punished. They are going to raise sanctions against them that they will not be able to fall in line to do commerce with the world. Why? Because they do not do the things the world, that the world is doing. Now, the Lord will inspire in us confidence in Him. Too many people stop serving God because of the fear that they will not have what to eat. But our key text says to us in Psalm 33 verse 18 and 19, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear Him, upon them that hope in His mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Do you have faith in these words? Let us go through the stories that we have for today to inspire in us that faith that will make us know that the Lord can deliver our souls from death and keep us alive in famine. During the days of Elisha, the Lord showed his power and special attention towards the righteous in providing for their needs. He ensured that there was a difference between those who served God and those who served him not. He made a separation between the holy and the unholy the righteous and the wicked, and he ensured that his blessings were on those who faithfully keep his commandments. One reason why many fall short in keeping God's law is that they worry over how their temporal needs will be met if they follow God's law. To many, it seems as though it is completely impossible to sustain life while living in harmony with his laws. The law of God seems restrictive. When you will want to advantage yourself in business through some unwise and seemingly slight departure from his commandments, the law will come up, speaking to constrain us and stop us from going in that direction. The righteous seems to be cut out of so many opportunities which are before him, either because those opportunities are sinful or to make a success of those opportunities will require some slight departure from strict integrity. Now, remember that Elisha had left a lucrative job of farm work and animal husbandry for the work of the ministry. But the Lord did not forsake him. Neither did he for any day look back at the decision in regret and estimating where he would have been and how, he, how much he, he might have made and how much would be in his bank account if he had continued in that business. In every difficulty, 
Elisha trusted God and God was able to meet his needs. Not just Elisha, but there were others who like him were faithfully serving God. God always set a table of abundance in the wilderness for them. Even when others lacked, Elisha and all those who served God were never lacking. So let us go through the story. Second Kings chapter 4, reading from verse 1. The first story is about a woman. It says, Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thus thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons, to be born men. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me. What hast thou in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. What, what kind of poverty? Wow. Then he said, Go. Borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. And when thou art coming, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him, and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and leave thou and thy children of the rest. Amen. You see, this woman was in a pitiful condition. Her husband was among the prophets. She was put in a difficult situation. She was poor. God intervened in her situation during this time of extremity. You see, this story is written for our benefit. It is to inspire in us confidence in God. It is true that the Lord permits bad things to happen sometimes. But even in this, I mean, the, the bad thing I'm referring to now is the death of this woman's husband. But even in this, he knows why. And we can trust him to permit only those things which is in our best interest. The loss of her husband, if the Lord permitted it, it was in her best interest. Uh, though it seemed to have been a bad event, but God knows why. And when the consequences of that loss was to be felt, he came true for her in an unconventional way. Ministry of Healing, page 473, paragraph 3 and 4 and downward says, Often, our plans fail that God's plans for us may, su may succeed. We are never called upon to make a real sacrifice for God many things he asks us to yield to him but in doing this we are but giving up that which hinders us in the heavenward way even when called upon to surrender those things which in themselves are good we may be sure that god is thus working out for us some higher good in the future life the mysteries that here have annoyed and disappointed us will be made plain we shall see that our seemingly unanswered prayers and disappointed hopes have been among our greatest blessings." End of quote. In the story of this woman who lost her husband, yes, we can see, she would understand later and for us too. We will understand by and by why the Lord permits certain things to happen. But the lesson we learn again from her is that the Lord will not allow the righteous to go hungry. The Lord provided for her. In another case, in 2 Kings chapter 4, reading from verse 38, it says, And Elisha came again to Gilgal, and there was a dearth in the land. And the sons of the prophets were sitting before him. And he said unto his servant, Set on the great pot, and seethe pottage for the sons of the prophets. And one went out into the field to gather herbs, and found a wild vine, and gathered thereof wild gourds, his lap full, and came and shred them into the pot of the pottage. And they, for they knew them not. So they poured out for the men to eat, and it came to pass, as they were eating of the pottage, that they cried out and said, O thou man of God, there is death in the pot. And they could not eat thereof. But he said, Then bring meal. And he cast it into the pot. And he said, Pour out for the people, that they may eat. And there was no harm in the pot. And there came a man from Baal Shalisha, and brought the man of God bread of the first fruits, twenty loaves of barley, and full ears of corn in the husk thereof. And he said, Give unto the people that they may eat. And his servitor said, What? Should I set this before an hundred men? He said again, as Elisha said again, Give the people that they may eat. For thus said the Lord, 
they shall eat and shall live thereof. So he set it before them, and they did eat, and left thereof according to the word of the Lord. Reading from Conflict and Courage, page 226, paragraph 5, it says, It is the grace of God on the small portion that makes it all sufficient. God's hand can multiply it a hundredfold. From his resources, he can spread a table in the wilderness. By the touch of his hand, he can increase the scanty provision and make it sufficient for all. It was his power that increased the loaves and corn in the hands of the sons of the prophets. End of, end of quote. My, I just pray that we all can read these stories and be inspired with that faith in the Lord that the Lord wants us to have. Like I said earlier at the beginning of this devotion, we are coming to a time where faith will be necessary. It will be important that those who serve God will have a strong faith. These stories were written for our learning. We are going to come to a time of famine very soon and we must be able to trust the Lord that He can take care of us through whatever means. We don't know, but He can take care of us. There was the man from Baal-Shalisha that brought this bread for Elisha. And Elisha in his generosities brought it for everyone to eat with him and the Lord multiplied it are you serving the Lord keeping his commandments doing his will I can tell you something for sure and I'm not saying this because I'm any prophet or anything but I'm just leaning on the Word of God you will never go hungry it is not possible don't be afraid of it as far as you are serving God the Bible says that those who serve God the righteous they never beg for bread they never go hungry the Lord always has a way to provide for them he did it for Isaac when there was a famine he did it for Abraham he did it for the children of Israel he did it for Elijah for Elijah and he has promised that he will do it for those that fear him do not forget the text that we read as our key text Psalm 33 verse 18 and 19 behold the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him upon them that hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine amen the story we are reading just now of how the Lord multiplied those 20 loaves of barley and full ears of the corn how he multiplied them to feed these prophets of the Lord the Lord is telling you should we come to a time of crisis remember that Elisha was living in a place just like our world today apostatized Israel worshipping Baal and worshipping that scene of Jeroboam at Gilgal and at um, Dan those two um, calves golden calves that he built they were still worshipping it till this time and even much more since the days that Jezebel brought in idolatry on every hand but there were people like Elisha the the prophets with him they were a small minority the remnant of Israel at the time the Lord took care of them but even the wicked were suffering during this famine the Lord knows how to take care of his people and even when their food had poison in it the Lord knew how that they could eat that food because what Elisha did how did it remove the poison I don't know but what I do know is that even if there was poison in that food, when the children of God ate it, they survived. Didn't Jesus promise that we will take poisons and that it will not affect us? What will lead us to taking these poisons? I do not know. But we can be rest assured that it will surely come to pass as the Lord said it. Another story that we will read for us to understand that the Lord can create a table in the wilderness for us. This one is a very stringent famine. Before I read, the background to this story is that there was a king in Israel that had his enemies to be the Syrians. At one occasion when the Syrians wanted to come and fight the Israelites, they knew that there was someone who was giving intel and he would foil the plans of the Syrians. This thing kept on happening till the Syrians realized there is somebody, a prophet among the Israelites let us go and take him he's the one doing this and they went to take Elijah they went to surround him so that they can capture him or kill him and when they came there the, the servant of Elijah was afraid but Elijah already knew what was going on and had prayed to the Lord 
And Elijah, Elijah prayed that the Lord should strike them with blindness, and they became blind. And then Elisha came to meet them and asked them, Where and what are you looking for? And they told him, and he said, Let me take you. And he took them, and when he took them, uh, he took them to the place, and he took them to king of Israel. And then their eyes opened. And when their eyes opened, then they realized where they were, and they could not escape. Now, king of Israel said, Let me kill them. Elisha said, No, don't kill them. Leave them alone. Then there came a famine in Israel. And that is what leads to what I'm reading now. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 24, it says, And it came to pass after this, that Ben-Hadad king of Syria gathered all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria. And behold, they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver and the fourth part of a cab of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. Wow, they were eating dove's dung. That's how bad this famine was. But you've not seen how bad it was yet. Let me keep reading. It says, And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help, my lord, O king. And he said, If the lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee? Out of the barren floor, or out of the winepress? And the king said unto her, What ailed thee? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son, that we may eat to him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son, and did eat him. And I said unto her the next day, Give thy son, that we may eat him. And she had hid her son. And it came to pass, when the king heard the words of the woman, that he rent his clothes, and passed by upon the wall, and the people looked. And behold, he had sackcloth within upon his flesh. Then he said, God do so, and more also to me, if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, shall stand on him this day. Now you can understand why he's saying this. Remember, Elisha stopped him from killing the Syrians, and he is making it look like, oh, if I had killed the Syrians before, this wouldn't have happened. So that's why he's saying he will cut off Elisha's head. But Elisha sat in his house, and the elders sat with him, and the king sent a man from before him. But ere the messenger that's before the messenger came to him, he said, as Elisha said to the elders, See ye how this son of a murderer had sent to take away mine head? Look, when the messenger cometh, shut the door and hold him fast at the door. Is not the sound of his master's feet behind him? And while he yet talked with him, behold, the messenger came down unto him, and he said, Behold, this evil is of the Lord. What should I wait for, the Lord, any longer? And now in Second Kings 7, from verse 1, it says, Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then the Lord on whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God, and said, Behold, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And Elisha said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. And there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come, and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the king of the Hittites and the king of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore, yeah, they, they, they got some misinformation. Wherefore, they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carried thence silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it and came again and entered into another tent and carried thence also and went and hid it. Then they said one to another, we do not well. This day is a day of good tidings, and behold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore, come, 
that we may go and tell the king's household. So it goes it's that these lepers went to tell the king what was going on. And after they told the king, the king came and all Israel and they saw that there was a lot of food for them to eat. Remember that there was a man who said that this thing cannot happen. Now, this man who said this thing cannot happen never saw. He heard of it. He saw it but he never ate it. It says in verse 18, And it came to pass as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, Two measure of barley for a shekel, and a measure of fine flour for a shekel shall be tomorrow about this time in the gate of Samaria. And that Lord answered the man of God and said, Now behold, if the Lord should make the windows in heaven, might such a thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it in thy eyes, but not eat thereof. And so it fell out unto him, for the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. What is the lesson we learn from here? Table in the wilderness again. There was famine, but the Lord knew how to provide for even the wicked. Ben Hadad was like was like Elisha said, the son of a murderer. He wasn't a good person, and many of them in Israel at the time were worshiping other gods. But the Lord still provided for them. Like I said earlier. This devotion is to inspire in us confidence in God that the Lord can provide for us even in hard situations but especially for the children of the Lord and especially should we understand that when the Lord tells us to do something, do not stop to try to ask yourself questions about the manner of what he said you should do. When the Lord gives a work, we read in Conflict and Courage, page 226, paragraph 6, when the Lord gives a work to be done. Let not men stop to inquire into the reasonableness of the command or the probable result of their efforts to obey. End of quote. Are you among those who are afraid to trust in God? Are you among those who do not want to live a life that you think is lucrative and you are sustaining yourself through the wrong means? not keeping the commandments of God because you are afraid that if you do what is right, you lose your job. If you do what is right, you will not succeed in your business. You think you can only succeed by cheating, by falsifying statements here and there. Trust in the Lord. The Lord can make a table in the wilderness. Even if your business closes down, even if you don't have a job, even if because of God's commandments, you are persecuted, God will provide. Psalms 37 reading from verse 16 says, a little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. Verse 18 says, The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. And 19 and 20 says, They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume. Into smoke shall they consume away. Verse 25 and 26 says, I have been young, and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lended, and his seed is blessed. Reading from Ministry of Healing, page 481 down to 482, we are told, Let us be hopeful and courageous. Despondency in God's service is sinful and unreasonable. He knows our every necessity. To the omnipotence of the King of Kings, our covenant-keeping God unites the gentleness and care of the tender shepherd. His power is absolute and it is the pledge of the sure fulfillment of his promises to all who trust in him. He has means for the removal of every difficulty that those who serve him and respect the means he employs may be sustained. Now, get that. If you respect the means he employs, Elisha was humble enough to receive from the man from Baalshalisha. You see, the Lord may sustain us by receiving help from others. Elisha was receiving help from people. The dignity of work and being able to provide for yourself and being proud that this is the hand, my hands that have given me this food was not for him at this time. He was humble enough to receive help. And it can be humiliating for a proud person. If you are proud, you may not want to receive help from people. But if you want to, if you want the Lord to sustain you, you have to also respect the means He employs to sustain you. He may use ravens. He may use your own secondary school mate that was your junior. Don't be ashamed of receiving. He may use someone who you 
if you have pride you may be thinking i'm above this person i'm not supposed to be receiving something from him no don't think that way you have to respect the way that god has employed to sustain you continuing the reading says his love is far above all other children with a love that is measureless and everlasting in the darkest days when appearances seem most forbidden have faith in god he is working out his will doing all things well in behalf of his people the strength of those who love and serve him will be renewed day by day he is able and willing to bestow upon his servants all the help they need he will give them the wisdom which their varied necessities demand said the tried apostle he said unto me my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly therefore will i rather glory in mine infirmities that the power of christ may rest upon me therefore i take pleasure in infirmities in reproach in reproaches in necessities in persecutions in distresses for christ's sake for when i am weak then am i strong second corinthians 12 verse 9 and 10 end of quote here what we have read now inspires in us that confidence to know that god can provide for us even in the darkest days he can spread a table in the wilderness and we should also know i don't know the situation you are in now but i know many people are in hardship has the lord been spreading a table in the wilderness for you check i trust that if you have been keeping the commandments of god if you are the righteous one i'm sure there is no way the lord will not provide for you the only thing is just that many times we are not happy with the way the lord is providing we are all complaining i need a job but, but that thing that you need the job for is the lord not satisfying it already i'm not saying you shouldn't look for the job no i'm not saying you shouldn't work hard no but at least while working hard be cheerful be joyful that the lord is still providing for you even if you do not have a means of survival for yourself even if you are in a time of famine as far as the lord has found another means to protect you and to provide for you and which is not the usual way which is from your own labors be happy and trust in god and thank him that he is able to provide remember that nothing happens to us except by god's permission ministry of healing page 488 paragraph 4 says the father's presence encircled christ and nothing befell him but that which infinite love permitted for the blessing of the world here was his co- source of comfort and it is for us he who is imbued with the spirit of christ abides in christ whatever comes to him comes from the savior who surrounds him with his presence nothing can touch him except by the lord's permission all our sufferings your loss of job your all our sorrows hmm? the loss of a loved one all our persecutions and privations the the consequences of your keeping the lord's commandments that may have led you to a place now where you are not as uh, affluent as you should be all the sadness and griefs like we see of that woman who had lost her husband all our persecutions and privations in short all things work together for our good all experiences our circumstances and circumstances are god's workmen whereby good is brought to us end of quote brothers and sisters god is able to take care of those who trust in him and we are to trust his love and trust his wisdom whatever he permits to come our way we can trust that he will always take care of us have have faith in god be encouraged let us pray thank you dear father for the words of encouragement that you've given to us i pray father that these words shall be consecrated to the hearts of all the listeners that we may be inspired with faith in you that we may learn to trust in you are there some who have been afraid to do the right thing because they are afraid that they will lose their jobs or they will lose their means of livelihood or they will not make as much money as they're supposed to or something bad will befall them because they are keeping your commandments please lord touch such a soul today and help them to do right regardless of the consequences give them that faith to know that you will certainly take care of them help us in all of this O oh lord and let your will be done in our lives in jesus name i've prayed amen even though the wind may blow troubles toss you to and fro get on your knees and give it time there are the answers you will find in jesus he's gonna let you know Even